Good morning. Welcome to the Dharma, um, the early morning practice. Please, as always, practice according to your abilities and conditions. Respect your limitations. And imagine that all creations experience this beauty. So in that way, perhaps this will motivate you to, or, or um, remind you to practice with a way, in a way that is conscious and mindful. So on that note, let's begin. Close the eyes, bring the attention within. Let's begin with the sound of Om three times, which represents the infiniteness of God, which is our nature as well. Imagine you are everywhere. At the moment of creation, God became part of all living beings everywhere. Tune your mind to that supreme divine consciousness that is within and all around us. And remember that all that we have is meant to be shared with all beings. May all beings enjoy this practice through our senses and be nourished through our bodies. May the Lord bestow upon us the fruits of knowledge. May we always have a strong desire for that knowledge that liberates us from pain and suffering. And may we cherish no ill feelings against each other, only ever peace, love, joy, and compassion. Om Shanti, 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 peace, peace, peace. To make this practice even more meaningful, even more powerful in meditation. Um, renounce all the fruits of the practice. And then imagine this as your divine duty to all beings everywhere. Just do it because it must be done for the benefit of all. So now let's do the mantra for purification to purify the space, the grounds, and all the second channels within. If you don't know it, just pretend you're chanting through the voice of the guru. You derive all the benefits as though you're chanting it perfectly. Om Pavitra Ha Pavitra Wa Sa Wa Rashtanga Topi Wa Ya Ha Smari Panti Kaksham Sa Ba Ya Bhyantra Ha Let's start off with spiritual breathing to connect with the divine on a deeper level. Bring your arms up over the head, palms slightly turned up. From the fingertips, inhale the breath, the breath down through the arms into the spiritual heart. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Holding it all in the heart, hold the breath there as well. Two, three, four, five, six. Exhale up the arms, send just a breath out. Everything that you pulled in stays within. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Inhale again. Everything you need down through the arms, feel it flooding yourself as it comes down and in. Right into the spiritual heart. And then holding it, spiritual heart, hold, for, hold the breath. Exhale again, out just the breath. Two, three, out through the arms. Five, six, seven, eight. One more time. Inhale, attract everything you need. Imagine there's a magnet sitting in the spiritual heart. Holding the spiritual heart as an offering to God who resides there. Exhale out the arms. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Bring your arms down now. Let's do color breathing. In order to increase our aura, which is our protection against psychic attacks, which is negative energy directed towards us, whether it's um, intentional or unintentional. So imagine a great sphere of colors surrounding us. And when we concentrate our attention on one area of the body in particular, and with the color associated with that area, we attract the healing there, the healing energy. And not, of course, only to ourselves, but try to remember to share it with others. 
So we're starting at the lower part of the body, the lower three chakras, at the roots, the navel, and the sacral area. They're close together. The whole area is dominated by the color red. Sound this awe. Just allow the sound to be to ride the breath. Inhale. Ah. Leave the space of silence between each sound so as to allow the vibration to continue to do their work. Next, at the cart, the color is green. The sound is you. It's a little bit of a higher pitch this time. So let's promote physical, emotional, and spiritual healing of the heart. You. to the center of the forebrow. Color is another shade of blue, different from the one we just pictured. The sound is E, it's for the sinuses. And the pituitary gland is located in this area as well. So we bring about um, health, radiant health, the whole endocrine system, all the glands in the body. Inhale. E Stay in that same region, the center of the forebrow, maybe a little bit behind it. Color is indigo this time. The ka sound is sun, S-U-N. Concentrate in the latter part of the sound, the end part that produces strong vibrations to help dislodge all the impurities from the world residing in the body. Imagine going up to the bloodstream, carried out of the body essentially. So just shake all the impurities out from wherever they're residing. Sun indigo of the third eye. Sun. This helps produce mental sharpness and clarity. This is, of course, needed for our discernment skills, which we need in order to reflect upon and to realize our true nature. Sound sun, the color violet at the crown. 
Inhale. Sum. Give me up in your pocket for a moment. But just take a moment before you do that to bring your attention to the heart, the spiritual heart. So located some of the chest, right side, physical heart, the residing place of God. And whether you believe in God or not, or maybe just the forces, or whatever brings you in a state of awe or reverence. Tune your mind to that. And try to feel the presence all around and within. And know that it's within all forms equally as well. The way that the unity manifests in this universe is through the forms. So celebrate all the beautiful and magnificent ways that God manifests in the form through these forces, this divinity. Appreciate and love each and every one. And through the practice, we cultivate compassion by seeing that divinity, divinity in each and every form, not just only our friends and families that are close to us, but all beings ultimately. So now with that intention firmly ingrained in our mind and heart, let's begin asking us to come to the standing. That's an early morning practice, I usually like to do some exercise to help promote some heat so that it helps promote the release of uh, toxins as a result of impurities. We're starting off with the organs. So if we do this one, imagine you're just shaking all the impurities out of the organs, pulling them, tumbling out with the action of the belly, by, the, the belly moving. So take a deep breath in, exhale, bend down, hands on the knee. You're completely empty now, the belly muscles are loose. Just allow the belly button to come in and out of the front or to come in the spine. And good. fast as you can. Aim for at least 50 times as you hold the breath out. Now pull the belly button into front of the spine. Push the heart through the shoulder blades. Feel like you're trying to push the belly button right through the lower back. Keep holding the breath out. All those areas into the chest. And then release come up. So if you couldn't do it quite as long as that, just at the end when you can't do any more, just do that. The, the push from the belly button to the front spine and hold and just make imagine that a vacuum sucked everything up out underneath the, the rib basket. One more time. Take a deep breath in. Exhale, come down. Keep holding the breath out as you pump the belly button. in and breathe out. So before you do that, it's good to drink some water, lemon water. 
warm lemon water and then just swish it around and it helps to dislodge all of the, helps also dislodge some of those impurities. So standing now with our feet 10 inches apart, hands on the hips, start the movements to work the joints. Starting with the neck, roll the head all the way around. If it feels better for you to do semicircles, you can do that. Try to get the ears, the shoulders, the chin to the front of the chest. You take the head all the way around, the back of the head to the top of the back as well. And go in the opposite direction. Now from here. Arms up, inhale, exhale down. Remember to do the exercises of vigor as well as the breathing in order to get the full range of benefits. Work the joints every day. Inhale straight up, exhale, pull the arms down. Inhale, stretch the arms out, exhale, snap them back in towards the front shoulders. Want, you can start to circle your arms up in the direction that they were swinging. And now back to the swinging. Start on the other side this time. And then turn your arms in opposite directions again. So your arms should be going opposite to one another and in the opposite sense of what you're doing before. Come over the head, take hold of the opposite elbows, bend to the left, bend to the right, left, right. Come back to the center and release. Inhale, raise your arms up over the head and settle the body down. Allow the belly to hit the thighs. Stay down for a moment to allow the body stop shaking and bouncing, and then make your way back up. So if these are just ideas for exercises you have your own that suit you better, then you can do those instead. Raise your arms up, exhale, drop down into squat. If you can't come down all the way, just go down as far as your knees allow you to. Be mindful of your joints and limitations. back up and now from here um, take hold the opposite uh, take hands together and turn from side to side you can do kapalabhati to do this so you, as you turn to one side you exhale the inhale happens um, um, passively as you come back to the center Also has a squat and you, there's four movements inhale circle the arms up exhale down inhale jump up exhale down if you can't jump just lift your heels you're like a child enthusiastic adventurous and you'll always be content if you stay in the mindset of a child. One more. And then release. Next one, arms in front of the body, wrist height to the shoulders. Inhale, circle around to the front. Exhale, pull and then pop, right, pop back out. Now same type of movement, but the arms back down the sides of the body. Inhale, circle around to the front, so it's so circle in the quarter. Exhale, pull in, drop the arms back down. Oh, 
open up the feet a little bit more. And now we're going to go from side to side again. Left arm up, inhale. Bend to the right, right arm up, inhale. Go to left. but we're holding it this time. The breathing's a little bit different. Left arm up, inhale, hold the breath, bend to the right, go a little bit deeper, breathe, bend. Come back up on the exhale, reach up for the right arm up, go to the other side. And then turn. If you turn and put, if that's in the opposite direction from the uh, way that you're bending, This way to help you turn your chest up towards the sky to keep the chest open. Try not to close in. And release. Voice remaining open and receptive to all. And back. Imagine your weight to touch the fingertips. Feel yourself sinking deeper with the weight. The arm above you. They use your imagination sometimes to try to obtain the effect you're trying to achieve. whole upper side of the body without making huge wrinkles in the underside by the waist. You lose yourself in the sensations. Two more on each side. Reach up, extend the line from the foot all the way to the hand above you. Which I said on it the entire day. Okay. Remain unconcerned no matter what happens, but comes your way. So the next time, next one, come down off the hands and knees. Cat cow. Knees and feet, uh, knees about hip width apart, wrists in line to shoulders. Inhale, arms to back. Exhale, round the back. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale, stretch the belly skin, and then the back skin. Feel the shoulder blade coming away from one, one another. Inhale, press up the neck down the shoulders. Exhale, pull it right your chin to the chest. Stretch the back of the neck. Inhale, no folds in the lower back of the back of the neck. Exhale, try not to cut off the airway completely. We're going to bring your chest, the chin into the chest. Inhale, exhale, inhale. Move in a way that's built to allow the prana to flow freely through the body. Up the psychic channels. Inhale. And back, exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Hold up the front of the body. Inhale. Hold up the back body. Two more, inhale, exhale, and one more, inhale, exhale. Now from here, next one's for the hips. 
You can modify the movement by keeping your knee bent if you need to. Raise your right leg up, inhale, and swing out to the right, and throw back up again. Continue. You can also slow down the movement if you like, but if you can, swing your leg back and forth like a pendulum going out of control. onto the belly now. If you like, leave the cushion underneath your hips and underneath your belly with the bottom edge of the, the cushion at the top of the your blanket. Come down onto the belly, anchor down through the lower body, the hips, the thighs, and the tops of the feet. If you can, join hands together. As you come up, squeeze the heels apart so you get a little bit more height. Come up, inhale. Exhale, back down. Shoulder blades together and buttocks down. Up. 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 Down. One more. And down, uh, relax. And breathe in. Breathe out all fatigue. Relax. Learn to circle the upper into me so you don't bring into the next movement. Okay, next exercise. Arms extend in front. You can, a couple of options, a few options. Lift the legs and arms at the same time and come back down. Or lift. The um, opposite leg to the opposite arm and just alternate between. If you're more, uh, if you're stronger, throw the legs up and when the hips and the chest come down, that action will help to propel the body upwards. So you're just rocking back and forth on your body. Looks like this. Don't use your hands too much. It'll stop the flow of movement. back into child's pose. Seat behind the heels to start. Four movements. Inhale, come up on the inhale and in high cat. Exhale, drop your hips to your hands. Ujjangasana Cobra. Back into high cat. Exhale, seat behind the heels. Inhale, come up. Four, don't lose your neck. Tells with your neck out of the shoulders. The trunk out of the hips. Inhale. Exhale back. Inhale, move gracefully but powerfully like a wave emerging from the ocean, reaching its full height. Let it turn to crest and then disappear into water in the water again. Come up. Come forward. Be as constant in your practice as the waves in the ocean. Keep coming, coming. And back. Inhale. Forward, the shoulders back. Inhale. And back. Exhale. Rounding as you come up on the inhale. Press in the spine. Push your chest forward. Again, try not to kink. Make any kinks in the lower back, the back, the neck. Up. And then back. Lengthening and, and softening. Inhale. Up. Forward. Up. Move your way again. 
spine that doesn't interrupt the flow of energy through the body, through the spine. Up. Forward. Up. No jerks. No aggressive, loud movements in back or sharp movements. The inhale, come up. And forward. Up. And back. Move in a way that doesn't agitate the mind, bring in this big restlessness. Up. Or destruction. Forward. Up. Be like the witness, just watching it all. And back, exhale. Inhale. tricks to move into the form. Up and forward. Up and back. Soon you will be able to realize all forms and find the ease in all forms. And in that ease, you try to bring the mind into quietness. Meditate in every form. Become one with all forms. Merge to the divine within each and every one. Okay, so next one, we're going to glide into Cobra, or there's a modified version of coming to the Cobra. So if you can do it, drag the body forward, pull the arms, and inhale, come up into Cobra, and hold the pose, drop your shoulders down, look up. Exhale, back. If that's a difficult entry for you, you can just come into baby plank, come forward, drop the hips to your hands, so very much like we just did. Chest forward, and back forward. Try to make your back look like the spine, look at the letter C shape. Come forward, brush the nose to the ground, point both sides of the body, turn the fingers out. This all helps to get you a little bit more easily into the, the, into the cobra. Come back. Come forward. Be powerful, mighty, wise, and regal like the serpent. Embody all those qualities of what you're representing. Imagine how that balance brings emotion. You become what you believe. So believe great things. Believe that like amazing things are ahead of you. And back, exhale. You can only go as far as your imagination. So keep cultivating a balanced life. Hold the breath, hold the pose. Just open in every sense. And back, exhale. Next set. And continue doing that entry, but yeah, also pressing your fingers, the heels are palms, lift the feet, try to lift the back down. And back it. So it doesn't matter if you don't touch, just work different joints at the same time. Come forward, you want to have your hips come right to the hands, almost pressing your fingertips, but lots of power in the fingertips. And back, King Cobra. So if you Again, just try to picture that beautiful serpent in your mind. The weight from the side of the head, make your chest wide, like have your shoulders back to, um, to create that image. And back, exhale. Come forward. Imagine you're squeezing socks behind the knees. Just open up your legs a little bit. Hold the breath, hold the pose. Forward. So you get every time the body comes into stillness, bring the mind into quietness as well. Come back. And even when the body's moving, don't change the temperament. One more. Come forward. Make your best one yet. Hold the breath. Relax in child's pose, breathe in, breathe out. So now we're going to come back onto the belly. Here, take hold of 
Keep the left leg long. Take the right hand on the foot. Press down on the foot. If you want, you can turn your hand, spin the heel, your palm onto the hand. Uh, curl your fingers around the toes. Try to get your foot down close to the ground. Again, be mindful of your knees, be mindful of the limitations. Extend your knee back, soften the knees as well. And then relax. Get the other foot now. You can have your hand with your fingers pointing towards the knee, or spin your hand around so that your fingers can curl on the toes. This might give you a little bit more power to bring your hand, your, your foot down. Extend your left knee back. Sometimes it helps to push into the right hand, lift the elbow up, you might be able to go again, go further, but be mindful of the condition of your knees. And back with healthy knees, it should be okay, but again, judge accordingly. So now coming into boat pose, if you can, take hold of the ankles. If you can't take your ankles, you can just lift up like this, or you can stay your fingers, fingertips on the ground and lift your thighs. Otherwise, take hold of your ankles, press to the base of the toes and heels, lean your head up. See if you bring your feet back, your thighs stay on the ground, it's all good. Pull your heels in towards the seat, inhale, come up again. Perhaps as you keep doing it, you'll be able to pull and get your legs up a little bit, your higher thighs. You come up and back. Be more flexible. Roll on the leg, try to get your feet up over the head, and come back. Push your chest forward, away from the seat. And down. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Up, okay. Otherwise, you can keep going if you feel strong and able. And down, one more up and down. Release. Bring your hands on the forehead, uh, the forehead and hands. Breathe in. Breathe out. Now take hold of the ankles again. Pull your thighs up off the ground and shake. In. Breathe out all fatigue. Let's flip onto your back. Do your tucks now. Walk the raise your arms up overhead, stretch. And pull the heel of the knees in towards the shoulders. Chin comes to your knees. Inhale. Exhale, tuck. Form the fist with your bottom. Inhale. Nice and tight. Keep your shoulders up off the mat. Try to get your shoulders close to the knees. Inhale. Elongate. Exhale. Squeeze and tight. Inhale. Stretch. All of the navel. Lengthen the navel. Exhale. Pull in. Inhale. Exhale. Spread your fingers and toes. Stretch the whole length of the body. Hold the breath and tuck. Make your body as compact as possible. Make it look like a fist. Inhale. And exhale. Inhale. Hold the breath this time and come into the tuck. And try to pull the knees up into the shoulders and shoulders up towards the knees. If you can, bring your forehead to the hands in front of you, um, over your knee. And release. Exhale. Inhale again, stretch. Hold the breath, come into the tuck. Use your elbows to squeeze into the side of your knees. Bring one fist in front of the other. It might get your head closer to your, your forehead closer to your knees. Release. Even if your head doesn't touch, don't worry about it. Concentrate on the space in your eyeballs. Stretch. Just do your best. Absolutely, more importantly, the effort, not the results. As you stop, when you bring your attention to the space in your eyebrows, all movement, all body, and 
movement and the motion is frozen. Now release, exhale, inhale, stretch. Hold and tuck. To witness watching body moving all by itself. Inhale. Breathe tight. Breathe tight. I go all expectations, all attention to breath. Release. Inhale. The act of offering is a transformative force. Hold it up and tight. Very, very tightly. Release. Aim to keep the mind calm even when the body or when is feeling tension or discomfort and even when you're just passing through difficult experiences. And you make a witness. Unaffected, undisturbed. And release. Take a moment. Take a deep breath in. Through all the pores of skin, imagine all the energy coming right into the body. Charge it up. Exhale, send that charge everywhere throughout the body, send out all these at the same time. Now the arms come over the head. If you stretch a roll back and forth, if you can, you can bring your feet all the way behind your head for a towel. Then bring your feet back down. Once you are down, hold your breath, come up, and then drink your body with your legs and exhale. Come back down, inhale, stretch, exhale, fold back into your towel, or if you need to modify, just Roll back and forth with your knee tucked into your body. If you're more straight, keep your legs and arms straight all throughout the transition. Move at a uniform speed again, try not to make any jerky movements. Nice and fluid. Two more. Extend. Good. Let begin to plow all the way back as far as you can behind the head. Come up, reach the arms way beyond the feet if you can. Your chest goes beyond your knees. And next time you go back, get ready to stand. Bend your knees, your feet, legs come down, press into your feet, and roll your way up. So now we'll continue. Come to the front of the mat. Through them, we're going to continue to build the feet. Bring your arms up a little bit, arch back, hold the body down. Bend your knees if you need to, bring your hands flat on the ground, right foot back, lower down the knee, drop down to the feet. Into the high plank, knees, chest, forehead down, and some weight if you need to cobra. If you can't push your hands, lift your hips away from that. Upward facing dog. Back into Adam Kusavanasana, down facing dog. Right foot steps to the hands. If that's difficult for you, you can lower the back knee. The foot doesn't make it all the way, just use your right hand to push your foot forward. Left foot comes into the right, Uttanasana, come right up, arch back. Hands up to the heart, engage the buttocks and the upper back as you arch back to support you. Hand movement, Uttanasana, left foot back. Into the plank, down we go. So right foot between your arms, push into your hands, left hips move away from the ground again. Back into Adho Mukha Savanasana, melt the heart, soften the line in the back. Then the left foot steps forward, feet together, Uttanasana, chest on the thighs, head down. Right up to standing again. Come back home. Go up and back, stretch the whole front of the body. Hold the body down. Don't worry about the breath, just move the body, the breath will deliver more of power and ease and movement, and grace and movement. Come right through to upward facing dog. Autumn with the Svanasana. Right foot forward. Just keep on trying to realize the image of your body moving gracefully in your mind with your body. Reach up and back. 
come back home. Again, stretch up, hold the body down, head close to your feet, left foot back, all the movements reflecting devotion, love, and surrender to divine service. Arms to the back, hips away from the ground if you can, knees away from the ground, then Adho Mukha Savanasana, head comes down below the arms, then the left foot steps forward to the hands, we begin the Uttanasana, feet over the heels if you're Flexible legs are straight and the whole front of the body press against the legs. Now come up, engage the buttocks, make her back. This is again back into Pranamasana. Go up and back. Hold the body down. Very mindful to the heart, watch the body move with more power base and use. Right foot back into the high plank. Down you go, it's an upward facing dog. Adam will just have Right foot forward. Put together Uttanasana. Come out, stand, reach up and back. And hands at the heart. Go up and back. Do some meditation. This is great for working the whole body. Your left foot back. Lift the plank. It helps to improve coordination and release as well. Make an upward facing dog. Adho Mukha Savanasana. Left foot forward. Try to make the transition seamless and continue the mind dance devotion. Uttanasana. Come right to stand, reach arms overhead. Come back home. Good, adding one now. Stretch your arms up overhead. You can down to bend your knees, your belly on your thighs. Your hands come over your shoulders and you can join them together. Face to the shins if your legs are straight. Right foot back. Back knee down, Kapyasana. Arms up overhead, arch back. Come back. The high plank. If you like, you can do the same entry. If you're strong, you can take your seats back. Pull your way through all the way without dropping legs and hips to the ground. Push into each your toes, the hands, and then back into Adho Mukha Savanasana. Right leg up, step the foot between the hands. Back knee down, Kapyasana again. Reach arms up and back. Try to get them behind and put belly to the ears. And then swing hands behind the back. Left foot comes in to meet the right. Uttanasana. Come right to stand, reach up and back. And then back home. Modify again as you need to. You can do the same as you did before if it's too much. Arch back. Go forward, bend your knees, push your body into your legs, send your hands over your shoulders, your forehead maybe to your shins. Left foot back. Kapyasana, wherever you are in your practice, is perfect. We'll have the chance to realize everything eventually. Into high plank, back, seat behind the heels, come right through. Push the elbows into the side of the body. Upward facing dog. So that makes the transition a little bit more easy. Easy. Left leg up, step the foot between the hands. Back knee down, arms up and back, behind the head if you can. Come forward, swing your hands behind the back, hold your breath as you bring your right foot forward so that you don't land the foot with a big heavy thump. Come right up to standing. Come back home. Go up and back. Slide down. Gesture of deep humbleness. Right foot back. Kapyasana, reach up and back. Come back into high plank. And give your choice into upward facing dog. Mm. Adam Kusanasana. The right leg up. Step the foot between the hands. Take the seat. Kapyasana, reach up and back. Stretch. Come forward again, down on your thighs. Join hands together, feet come together, go Uttanasana. Push your seat to line over your heels if you're flexible. Whole body against the legs. Then come right up again. Hands back to the heart. Reach up and back, stretch the whole front of the body. Hold the body down. Move like a shapeshifter between the forms, effortlessly. Left leg back. Kapiyasana, breathe your inner light. Open your heart in every sense. Into high plank, physically, spiritually, fleshly, emotionally. Into upward facing dog, Adho Mukha Savanasana. Left leg up, and step the foot between the hands. Back knee down, drop down to seat, reach up and back, stretch. Come forward, belly on your thighs, hands behind the back, feet together. Uttanasana, hands over your shoulders. 
Come out of sin and reach up and back. And come back home. Be part of the moment. If on the heart, inhale the left mind up to the crown. Hold the breath. And let your love awareness all be set in there. And come back down to the heart. Bringing the sub of the divine love towards all beings everywhere. And release. So that was pretty fast, but when you see Dharma, he does it extremely fast. It's hard to keep up, and he's 85 years old. So the lesson is, as he said, keep on moving. So we keep applying radiant health. So the right hand to the heel, and then take the leg out to the side for ballet pose. If you're having trouble balancing, come against the wall if you like, or bring your left hand on the wall. More flexible, take your leg up higher. Try to have your arm and your leg at the same angle. Can look up, open up the heart up. Be like a dancer, magnificent and graceful and poised. Now from here, we're going to let go of the foot, do it slowly so we don't let the foot drop. Hold the breath, engage leg muscles, let go of the foot. Keep knee to your left as you bring your right leg down, right into eagle from here. Bend your left knee, land your belly on your thigh, Raise your right leg up even higher if you can, higher than the hip as the head comes down. You imagine you're soaring through it from a great height at great speed. Arch your back a little bit if you can, curve your back by bringing your chest forward, your shoulder blades squeezing against one another. And now we're coming, coming, right, coming right back into ballet pose if you can. Hold the breath. Whatever happens again, remain unconcerned. If you fall, come right back up again. Keep on trying, keep standing tall. And from here, let go of the foot, come back down. Whatever happens, just dance with it. Press down into the right foot, lift the left the knee, take hold of the heel, again, bring the leg out to the side. You can bring the foot up higher again, or try to keep the uh, zones of fingers and toes are roughly at the same height. Look up again. Push your lower back up and in, lift the chest. Now from here, let go of the foot. Again, engage the muscles. Bring the right left foot down, go to the right a little bit, make your transition into eagle. Bend your right knee, get your belly on your thigh. Arch the back, bring your chest forward. Reaching up a little bit. Press with the right foot, come right back up. Take hold of the heel again from the inside, right into ballet pose. Sometimes the balance is not there. Be unconcerned. If it's just the gunas at play, they change all the time. So just be. Um, be unconcerned, unbothered, and then release the foot. Okay, so now come to the back, um, come to the back of the mat, bring the right knee up, take hold of the ankle, left arm up, so you can even just stay here if this is where you're at. Otherwise, bend your left knee, lean forward, push your foot away from your seat, Natalajasana. And you can take your left hand to your foot, pull the foot in towards the seat, and push it back out. Now from here, you can lean forward with your foot, dive down. Bend your right knee again, push your, foot, your left knee again, push your foot out. You can also release your left hand to your, the ground, and then turn to the right, open up your chest, and then Release the foot, extend the leg, Alajandrasana. Bring the right foot down, I like to combine movements here. Again, just to um, practice coordination and just keeping the mind still, no matter what the body's doing. If you're bending your right left knee so you can get by your belly on your thigh, left hand on the foot, index finger on the outside heel. Try to move your right hand closer and closer, stay in there. Let it let it just on one fingertip, maybe the hand on the foot as well. So feel on your right toes. And 
can get the pose from the waist back down. And then from here, roll your way up. Head as heavy as you need to weigh up. All right, on the other side now. So I'll bring the right knee up, oh, sorry, left knee up. Stand your right foot. Take hold of the ankle. Bring the right arm up. Again, take your variation of modification. Modification as you need to bend your right knee, push your foot away, and when the foot is far away as possible, you can straighten out the right leg again. If you want, come up a little bit, take hold of the foot with both feet, bring the foot close to your seat again, standing ball pulse. Push your chest forward, try to get your toes the height of the head. If you want, come down, bend your right knee. the ground, stay on the fingertips, and then pull, keep, keep pulling your left leg, open up your chest to the side. Release the foot, out uh, between the last one, bring the left leg, extend the left leg, left arm up, and go down with your left hand. Bend your right knee, get your guard on your side. If you need to bend your left knee as well, you can. If it's too much for your hamstring, see if you can get your right hand on the foot, index finger on the outside of the heel. Eventually, your nose might even come to your shin. Get your leg all the way up as high as you can, or your knee, alternatively, and walk your hand closer and closer, your left hand towards your foot. Maybe you end up with just one fingertip on the ground, one fingernail. Eventually, hold your breath, take your left hand to your foot. Index fingers on either side of the heel. And then break the pose. Bring the left foot back down. Head stays heavy as you roll your way up. Good. Turn the palms forward. Charge the body from everywhere. Bring the best of the best into the spine up to the ground. Exhale, send it everywhere throughout the body. Now, from here, we're going to continue with some other poses. Stand facing the long edge of the mat. Get ready to go into a Virabhadrasana. First step or jump your feet apart. Turn to your left now. Left foot moves forward. Virabhadrasana two. Nice and strong. Your back leg, if you're flexible, your knees over the toes, your back knee is close to the ground. Work your hips, work your thighs. Then the right arm comes up to meet the left. You beat up the glass in the one. If you can't turn your hip all the way, you can lift your back heel. Look up to your hands, make gesture in the, to embody the devotion of the warrior, always ready to serve. Now lower the knee down, sink your seats all the way down, hands in cover, move your walk your shoulders back and forth, pull your body by the hips, use your arms to pull your body further out, and then arch back, lean away from the leg. Again, try not to make a big fold across the lower back, push your chest forward and up, push your lower back up and in. Maybe you get some of them just like a crescent moon, keep your arms straight. Be true to the form. No kinks anywhere along the line of the curve. From the nose to fingertips. Now break the pose. Bring your hands to the inside of the left foot. Move the left foot out to the edge of the mat. And just rock back and forth. Push off the feet to your toes. Try to get your hips to sink. These are all warm ups. They all prepare the body for deeper poses that you're trying to stay in. Longer. Push out to the right foot, lower the knee, flatten out the toes, and fall to your right so you can get your right form down if your hips are low enough, and then roll back to your left. Both sides of the hips down equally, and keep telescoping your head and chest forward. The more you lengthen, the more the body comes down. Imagine you're sliding forward into a cobra, same kind of action, lead with the heart, lead with the heart always, in all ways. If you're Flexible, bring your chest right down on the ground. Take whatever variation you like. 
your left shoulder bone, she's sitting on the left foot. Make sure your knee's not falling out to the side, nor your foot sliding away like this. Keep your shin vertical. Now coming back onto the hands, push the seats back so it's over the back knee, lift the toes. Adhanasana, bow to the leg. Imagine trying to get your chest beyond your knee. Telescope your, your head and chest forward. On the inside legs, on the exhale, just sink more weight onto your thigh. Try to get that weight to release the legs, the muscles in the back of you. Bring your attention to where we want to feel the release. That's where the prana will go. Your attention is like a compass. If this is easy for you, hinge your hips forward. Hanganasana, slide your left foot forward on the slide on the heel. Bring your hands back alongside your hips so you should feel like you're doing a lunge here. Your chest is forward and up. Pulse, press to the base of the toes. Don't go again too hard or too fast. Don't go to a place of pain or suffering. Remember what you're trying to, what you're offering. If you're all the way down, you can take your hands up if you like. Like Anuman, making that physical need with as much of a leap of faith as well. Anything is possible. You will have the chance again to realize everything. Push into your fingertips, lean forward, and slide your left foot back underneath your knee. The legs should look like a box, and you should be able to take the left foot up off the ground easily if it's right, if it's well placed. Kari Brita Pashkanasana, right arm up, anchor the toe knee towards the right, push it out of the way, make more space for the right arm to come down. You want to have your arm on the outside of the knee eventually. Left hand pushed into your right, you can also do a fist, it might be easier to push down into the bottom hand. As you're doing this, the body comes up higher, so the center of the chest eventually comes behind your thumbs, roll the left shoulder all the way back, turn and face each other down. Keep pulling the left hip back, the head forward. If you have a bind, you can go ahead, push your seats back, use your left hand to just tap along the arm, try to get through underneath your leg, and then your right arm, your left arm goes over the back. Join your hands together underneath your belly, on your thigh, and if you can, lift the back knee up. You can lift the back knee up regardless of whether you're in a bind or not. Push up through the back heel. You can keep your knee on the ground. Remember, you can hold to your abilities. Break the pose. Come back to the center between your legs. And come up. Go to the right. Turn your right foot forward. Sink into the hips. Straight line from hand to hand, so make sure the back arm is not dropping down. Keep strong through your stance and through your demeanor. Embody all the qualities of a warrior. They're already within, you just have to turn them on. Turn forward, give up a last one. Look up to the hands, allow the head to fall back. Run through the pose and then you can stay a little bit more easily in the pose. Right back knee down, hands together, Kali Mudra, push your seats all the way forward, bring your arms back, walk your shoulders back and forth. To get the curve in the back, we try to work our downward facing dogs, try to get your head below the arms, keep working your shoulders, push your chest towards the ground if you're doing a downward facing dog. All wrinkles out of the lower back by pushing your lower back up and in with the chest. And back from here, wizard, peace fast and have your hands inside the right foot, the right foot moves to the edge of the mat, and then go back and forth. The body's not used to, if you're not used to doing the morning practice, of course you go easier when you're first starting. Allow your body to adjust. Push one more time to the back foot, lower the knee, climb up the toes and fall to your left. Roll back the legs. The morning is a magical time to practice. 
that world is a little bit more quiet. And that is helpful for your ability to go into your meditation. Up from your head, chest forward, and get your anchor down, and the rest of your body will follow. Be like a lizard. Be still and completely unconcerned, just basking in the sun. And come about, back out to the hands. Out of the Hanumanasana. Push your seats back, lift the toes up on the front foot, bow to the leg. Pull with your arms, so you're trying to pull the floor towards you at the same time you're reaching the floor to the chest. And now just trying to get your heart to you beyond your knees. Now, if you like, you can go into Abha, full Hanumanasana, or you can stay there. So you hinge your seat forward, slide on your heel. Sometimes it's easier to do it on a slippery surface as opposed to your sticky mat. And then come back upright by bringing your hands close to your seat, pushing the base toes down on the back foot as well. So you don't have your right hip way forward to the left, which would be easier. Square. Okay, pulse lightly, gently. Eventually you'll come down all the way if you can. You can take your hands up again. With the Hirti Echo Rules, especially the foundation of the practice, that's when you're able to, and that's the presence of all the other practice, that's what will eventually help you to relieve. Relieve your mind from restlessness. No attachment to the worldly desires, the materialistic desires. No attachment to the body either, for that also is not your true self. temporary container to learn some experience and gain some knowledge. Now from here, slide your right foot back underneath your right knee and come upright. So you're going to test again, bend the toes under the back foot so you can lift your right foot up off the ground. And then if it's easy to lift it, then you can stamp it there. Just hold it in place, angle the toe knee towards the left, go down to the right arm from the inside of the knee, keep pressing the back shoulder into the outside of the knee, and then again push. If your hands are still by the shoulders, keep pushing down against the back of the outside of the knee, the right hand into your left, downward, and the belly comes up, higher than the thigh. Try to get the sun just behind your belly, with the right shoulder back and up. If you want to take your body, go ahead, push your seat back, and you need to get the right hand to tuck along the back of your arm, lower arm, right arm, then go below your back. If you can get your left arm underneath your leg. Lift the knee up off the ground. Sometimes you can try with your knee up off the ground first before you go into the bind. Sometimes with that extra space underneath, it's a little bit easier to get your arm underneath. Try different things. Be curious, be adventurous. Push your shoulder or your shoulder back. Break the pose, come back to high plank. Always changing direction so to get the best view. Move your left hand in front of your nose to the right a little bit. Vasana Svasana. Straight line from hand to hand, from feet, the feet to all the way to the ground. Make sure you're not dropping to your shoulder. If this is starting to happen, you start to drop into your shoulder, hips are sagging. Just bring your left knee down. Make sure your left, the, your thigh is straight again. Vertical. Just from here. You can then eventually go over variations. You can lift your right leg if your knee's on the ground to hold the foot. If you're in a full side plank, you can go to Urdhva Dhanivas and you can spin your left foot. Try to get your hip up wildly. Push your hip all the way up. Toes fall the same line as your leg. Inside edge is foot down. So you can take your foot up off the ground. You need to practice this. When you catch the knee, catch the knee. When you catch the foot, oops, catch the foot. If you flip the turn too much, it will flip you out of the pose. Now break. Come back to high plank. Go on the other side now. On the hands, go to your left. Start off with 
you fundamental pose. You can stay there the whole time if you want. The right hands will open from the shoulder. To remind you to keep it straight and extended. And then go into your variation as you wish. Or stay there if this is where you're at, your edges. So they push with your right toes in the same line as rest the leg, not turn too much. No more than 45 degrees. And then so you can take your left foot up off, your left foot up off the ground. You have to plant the inner edge of the right foot down as well. Move the foot closer if you need to. And then it will become more easy to take your knee up and keep it up. Take hold of the knee then and the or the foot. Here, jump to your hands. Into squat. Push your thighs outwards. Now here you have the choice: bakasana with your arms straight, if you know that one, or kakasana. Kakasana. Come back a little bit. So you press the back of your arms into the inner thighs. Your shoulders will lift your knees. Press into your hands. Lift your heels. Move forward a little bit up so that your shoulders come away from your tips. And then from here, keep your body low. Keep your arms bent so you can have a shelf for your legs to sit on. Your shins to sit on. And bend your toes back as you're holding your breath so that your feet can come off the ground. So just like this, even if you just do one foot or dance from toe to toe. Ideally, your elbows are over your wrists. If you have the bakatsana, go ahead. Your arms are straight. Your knees come more into the armpits for this one. Spread your fingers equally. Forward and then if you lose your armpits, keep your arms straight, keep your heels up towards your feet. So if you want to come into headstand from here or teddy bear, bend your arms first, tuck your chin in, and bring your forehead on the ground, and then you press into your hands so your seat comes more over your shoulders. You can stay there in teddy bear, or you can make your way all the way up into headstand. Stay for a bit. If you don't want to come into headstand that way, you can do it from the ground. So bring your knees on the ground, hands beside your knees on either side. Put your forehead on the ground and lift your seat. Move your hip, your little seat up, walk your hands towards your ribs, and just place your knees just underneath against your elbows. Your just above the knees or just on the on, on the upper arms, just close to your elbows, and then see so if you can lift your toes up all the way from the ground down. Start with your just bending your toes back away from the ground. Eventually your feet come up. You can stay there again or come right into your headstand. If you're in a headstand, you can turn your fingertips, come onto your fingertips, turn your palms towards your fingertips facing away. And then if you want, you can even lift fingers up by one at a time until that you're on your index finger. Sometimes it's better to split your legs to keep your balance. This is for advanced practitioners, of course, okay, so you know your limitations and your abilities. Now again, we're going to come back down. Bend your knees, come back into tuck, or come down one leg at a time with your legs split. If you want, you can land, put your hands around first, kind of squat on the ground, back into your crow. Lift your head before you bring your feet back down, and then come back down. All hobbies are progressions. Do just keep working, keep trying, so you don't stay stagnant in your practice. Keep on moving forward. Breathe in, breathe out. Roll your way up. Try not to get too attached to the results. Remember, everything is an option. So from here, slide your seat forward to the front of the mat. Roll back into plow pose. Put your seat. Bring your hands to your seat and bring your feet behind your head. Now move your arms a little bit further back behind your body. Shift them from one side to the other. Join your hands. Try to get your wrists together. Your elbows come closer. You can stay with your knees close to your shoulders in plow pose. If you want, you can hand on the back, press into your back, and then lift one leg at a time from the shoulders. 
seats. They have baby piles. It looks like piles that your seats are a little bit behind your shoulders. It's a more relaxed, restorative type of shape. Be still once you find your shape, your pose. Offer it up. Merge with the form. The one of God. See the divine and eternal form, the beauty that radiates from within. Be grateful for the knowledge that every experience, every being imparts to you. When you put yourself in that pose, it's like you're experiencing something with their life through their eyes. Here, come back to plow. If you are in shoulder stand, softly, no big, heavy landings. Okay, we're going to exit. Place your hands behind your back, palms down. Slide back down. Roll back down. Bit by bit, keep your legs close to your body. Bring your hands close together behind your back. As your legs come down, palms are down. Thumb tips, if that's you touching, same as the index, uh, the index fingers. Come down when your seat is on the hands. Keep lowering down until you're halfway, and then stop. Your legs should be at 45 degrees. Now push into your lower arms, lift your back up off the ground. Push your elbows in a little bit more. Push your chest up. See if you get the top head to the ground. If it's too much, bring legs all the way down to the ground. Fish pose. Breathe very fast and most of this thinking God. down and release the pose. Once you're, uh, take out your hands from out uh, from your knee, breathe in, exhale, remove all fatigue. Just melt everything down. Now come up over the head, sit up. Any which way you like. So from here, Tadasana, star pose. Your feet are Far away from your body, knees are just slightly bent. Fold your feet together, and in Kali Mudra, index fingers pointed, reach forward, and cup your hands around the toes. From here, your elbows and your knees from above look like the side points of a star, your index fingers and your feet. The base of spine are like the top of bottom points. Keep extending, if you're flexible, maybe you can bring your forehead down onto your toes, your chin under your heel. Deep. Walk in your breath now from the base of spine, bring head up to the crown, exhale back down to the base of the spine. Feel the shoulder blades falling away from one another. You keep on dropping out to the right, down to either side. Take a breath. Chest is high on the shoulders. Make sure you're not sagging to the middle. Now breathe very fast. Pull the seat down. Stretch your legs out in front. Left hand to your side of the right shin. Right hand right just behind your back. Or step to the side. Inhale, push your lower back up and then stretch. Exhale, turn to the right. Push actively against the outside of the right shin. Come a little bit forward. Pull the belly button to the front of the spine. And inhale, exhale, turn more to the right. Come back to the center, go to the other side. So it's not like this, this is not doing much for you. 
bring your hand right against the sternum of the back. The feet are natural, not neither too pointed or too flexed. Inhale, push the lower back up and in. Turn, take over your left shoulder. Keep pushing against the outside of the right shin with your uh, left shin. The back straight. Then exhale, imagine you bring to the bowl all the teeth. Imagine the best, the best now coming in, arriving from everywhere around. Imagine being flooded by all thy goodness. Coming in like great beams of light, coming right to the points of skin, infuse yourself with all that goodness. Fill yourself up with it. And be grateful for all of it. Imagine it's coming from all beings everywhere doing the same thing as you. And even if they're not consciously doing it, as you are in your practice, just remember that. Our true nature, once again, is the same as God's, just that at the beginning of our journey, at the beginning when we first come into existence, we don't have the knowledge of the true self. It takes a while, many lifetimes, to achieve that knowledge. In the meanwhile, be patient and be kind, compassionate to all. Remember, we're on the same journey as well. We still have, still have to learn as well. Continue to cultivate compassion and love through the practice. Through the effort of trying to deliver the best of the best, kindness and compassion and love to all beings. Seat position so that you can continue your mission of radiating, radiating your light and your love to all beings, your wisdom that helps to break the patterns that cause pain and suffering. Share the knowledge that you have that's helped you in some way. Come back to seat position for the closing. and I encourage you to go ahead and do some more to help further integrate the, the benefits of the practice. Much love.